Dr. Chris, orthopedic surgeon and sports medicine physician. And today, I'm gonna review soccer injuries. Part two, we already did part one. Many of you have suggested, after watching our first video about World Cup soccer injuries, link will be down in the description, that I should do another one. I'm gonna do that today. Okay. I have to preface this by saying, once again, that I don't really watch soccer a lot, so I don't know a lot about soccer. For sure. To be honest, I was gonna do a video called Dr. Reviews English Premier League Soccer Injuries. But when I went to go check the videos, I wasn't sure which teams were in the English no, Premier no, League, no, and I really didn't want to get roasted by you guys again. So it's just gonna be soccer injuries. If you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe, hit the notification bell. If you're a returning member of the intern army, <laughs> You know what to do, go smash the like button and share this video with a friend. For those of you who have specific questions about orthopedic sports medicine or medical problems in general, be sure to join us for our live stream which is running weekly where I can interact directly with you to answer your questions. With all that being said, let's get to reviewing the videos. Okay, so let's check out this first one here. Player falls off balance. Okay, and he puts his arm out and he lands on his arm, but as he does so, he is kind of landing at an awkward angle. If you notice, the opponent's right leg manages to smack his arm just at about the level of the elbow, just as he falls to the ground with all of his weight. When he does that, his arm goes into a bit of hyperextension and we have a elbow dislocation. This may also be a fracture dislocation of the elbow. If it's only a dislocation, then this will require a closed reduction, which may or may not be done on the field if they have the appropriate individuals present. I may require him to go to the hospital to have this uh, reduced. And then immobilization after the reduction. If this uh, also involves a fracture, then this may also require some uh, surgery to stabilize the fracture fragments and then after that, immobilization, and after the period of immobilization, whether it's a uh, fracture dislocation or a dislocation, then he'll require rehabilitation with a physiotherapist to regain the strength and the uh, flexibility of his elbow. All right, so let's move on to the next one here. So I had to watch that one from a few different views to see what was, was going on. It's not until we see the view from the camera, which is right in front of him, that we actually get to see what's really happening. As the player in the yellow jersey is tackled by the uh, defending opponent, the defender rolls on his legs as he is running. So bones are really good in compression, but they suck in rotation, and we've talked about this at length before. As I said in another video, bones are very strong in compression, but they are crap in rotation. I've said this before in several videos, bones are great in compression, but they absolutely suck in rotation. And so you can see here that the foot gets externally rotated, meaning that it turns towards the outside, externally rotated on the tibia, which is in a fixed position. The tibia is aligned forward, but the foot gets externally rotated as the opponent rolls up on his ankle. And so you either end up with a ankle dislocation, if you're lucky, or a fracture dislocation of the ankle if you are unlucky. So we can see here that they're carting him off the field because this guy is not gonna walk and he's going to require some orthopedic medical attention. All right, so let's go on to the next one here. Here we have two opponents who are jumping up to intercept the ball. One of the soccer players is higher than the other. The one who is lower contacts the ground first. And as he does that, he sort of falls forward. The other player lands on the outstretched arm at the level of the elbow. He basically forces the first player's shoulder into more external rotation than it can tolerate and we end up with a dislocation, an anterior dislocation of the right shoulder. And initially when I looked at this, I thought, oh, he had suffered a um, dislocation or a fracture around the elbow. But we can see afterwards that his elbow has normal configuration or normal anatomic appearance, and they have also stabilized his shoulder in internal rotation against his body. And this is typically the position that they would stabilize the shoulder in if he had suffered an anterior dislocation of the shoulder. 
on this one here we have um, two players obviously running after the ball. One of the players, the defender, appears to uh, fall to the ground and as the opposing player runs past him, he um, gives him a stomp with his soccer cleats to the neck. The larynx and the pharynx, which are the structures in the front, which is basically uh, where all of the air travels when it's going from your, your nose down to your lungs, those structures can be uh, injured by a, a crush mechanism such as stomping um, with soccer cleats, thereby making it difficult for you to breathe. There is a potential for a very serious injury here that could require surgical management. Okay, so now let's go on to the next. An attacker who is running with the ball, and then we have a defender who basically is trying to intercept him. And he tackles him in the shin, just above the level of the ankle. The attacking player suffers a forced internal rotation of his foot on his tibia at the level of the ankle. And this likely results in either a very bad sprain of the ankle or quite possibly a fracture of the ankle at the medial malleolus. On the medial side of the ankle, um, because the tibia is located in front of the fibula, if you rotate things uh, medially or towards the middle, there is either you're going to sprain the ligaments if you don't have enough force for there to be um, a severe injury, or if the force is quite high, you're going to end up fracturing the medial malleolus because it's in front and as the bone, as the foot rotates medial, medially uh, or internally on the end of the tibia, it knocks off the, the medial malleolus. You're less likely to have a dislocation here because the tibia is located in front of the fibula. So in order for you to have a dislocation, the foot really has to be rotated an extreme amount and has to be translated forward. Whereas with a fibula fracture or an angle dislocation, when you have external rotation mechanism, mechanism, the foot can be rotated externally and already the fibula is behind the tibia. So it's, it's relatively uh, much more easy for the foot to be dislocated as it rotates externally than when it, it rotates medially or internally. So obviously you can see from these injuries that we're covering that lower extremity injuries and in particular injuries of the ankle are very common in the sport of soccer. So if you're a soccer player looking to prepare yourself for the game, you may want to concentrate on strengthening your lower extremities and in particular the muscles around your ankles. Okay, so let's check this one and we have two players going to attack the ball. Oh. I think this sh we have a recurring theme here. I don't know a lot about soccer, but it seems to me that the defenders tend to target the legs of the attacking players rather than the ball when they go to tackle them. Here we have another case of exactly that. This time we have the defender attacking the outside of the attacking player's leg. So when he does that, and the attacking player's foot is planted on the ground, we now have what is called a valgus stress. That is a stress that is applied to the outside of the knee, causing the knee to go into a knock knee configuration. And this causes eventually the inside of the knee, in other words, the medial collateral ligament, to give up and cry uncle. And so we have a MCL tear of the knee. There are other structures that could also be injured with this type of mechanism, which include the medial meniscus and also the anterior cruciate ligaments. It's hard for us to know exactly whether all three of these structures have been in, injured in this particular case, but we know at the very least that the MCL was torn as a result of the degree of opening of the inside of his knee. Although we're unable to measure the exact amount of opening that occurred at the inside part of the knee, we know that the amount of opening is at least more than 10 millimeters, which would make it a grade three ligament injury. So in the context of injuries to the MCL ligament, this would be the worst. Okay, so this is an injury that occurred uh, in isolation of anybody else. The goalie looked to uh, injure himself 
as he's running across the pitch. So you can see that he's got an obvious deformity of his ankle and it's not exactly clear how that happened. But then when we look at the slow motion, we can see exactly the mechanism that occurred. And so as he ran towards the ball and started to fall towards the ground, his left foot was planted on the ground, but yet he was falling back to the left hand side. So as his foot was planted and could no longer slide, he continued to rotate his body around the planted foot. And once again, we have rotation. So when you have a rotational force that is applied at the ankle, it produces a significant amount of torque. And as I've said many times in the past, as I said in another video, bones are very strong in compression. But they are crap in rotation. I've said this before in several videos, bones are great in compression, but they absolutely suck in rotation. Bones are awesome in compression, but they absolutely suck in rotation. And this is no different. And we can see here that at a given point of rotation, the bones of the ankle, in other words, the fibula and the tibia, give up cry uncle, and we end up with a fractured dislocation of the ankle. So this is obviously something that is going to require some operative management. This goalie will go on to undergo an open reduction and internal fixation of the fibula, plus or minus the tibia, plus or minus the syndesmosis for this injury. Either way, this goalie is not gonna walk, and we can see them carting them off the field. All right, let's go on to this next one. Oh my lord. Sometimes it's not entirely clear whether we're actually playing soccer or American rules football. So in this example, we have a defender who is attacking the net with the ball and we have the goalie running out to meet him. And in this particular example, the goalie decides to basically full on body tackle or shoulder tackle the attacker in the head rather than going for the ball. And this basically knocks the attacker out senseless. So one of the interesting things that we see here is how the players on field manage this player who has a decreased level of consciousness. So we can see here that the, the soccer player is not entirely unconscious. In this case, it is important to help this person to protect their airway. And so we can see here that a number of the players are trying to do exactly that. They are trying to open his mouth to make sure that he does not swallow his tongue or that he has not bitten off his tongue during this collision. Here, there is a potential for problems. If the person or the patient who has a decreased level of consciousness begins to seize, there is a possibility that anything that you put in their mouth could be bitten off by their teeth as the jaws contract with the muscles from the seizure. They have really good intentions here of helping him to protect his airway, but it's a little bit risky when they stick their fingers in his mouth because they could potentially lose those fingers if he started to seize. So if you are the first person on the scene and there is no other way to do this, then you just might have to take the risk and use your finger. However, as soon as the training staff or the medical personnel come on field, they will have the appropriate tools and the appropriate instruments to help to establish and maintain the airway in the player with a decreased level of consciousness. And interestingly enough, there are rules now in American football and Canadian football where we try to prevent this type of thing from occurring because there is a very, very real possibility of causing permanent head and neck injury by doing these kinds of hits. It is important that we try to eliminate these injuries in soccer so that we can avoid permanent injuries to the brain and the neck in soccer players. And just as knee and ankle injuries are common in soccer, you would be amazed at the incidence of concussions and head injuries in this sport as well. So for this last one, we can see that we have a defender jumping over a player and landing at an awkward angle as he is falling backward. Immediately as his left foot is planted and he begins to fall backwards and to the left, he rotates or his body rotates around the planted foot and he suffers a fracture dislocation of the left ankle. So once again, this will require an open reduction and in internal fixation, and this guy is gonna be off for most of the season, if not all of it. So there are three takeaway points that I have from this video. Number one, 
In soccer, ankle injuries are common. So, as a soccer player, you should spend time to strengthen the muscles around the ankles to make sure that you can minimize the chances of injury to your ankles when you are playing this game. Number two, injuries of the knee are also common in soccer. So, you should spend time strengthening the muscles of the lower extremities to make sure that you can minimize the chances of injuries to your knee. In addition, you should also spend time on proprioceptive exercises to make sure that you have better position awareness and proprioceptive ability when you are playing soccer. Programs such as the FIFA 11 or 11 Plus will help you to do this in your warm up before you play. And number three, head injuries in soccer are very common. And so we need to make sure that we train our players appropriately. We avoid targeting the head when we challenge tacklers or challenge for the ball. So there you have it. Today I've been reviewing soccer injuries. And as always, that's been a word from Dr. Chris, not your everyday ortho. Just a flesh wound.